So I wanted to be the first one picked, and then when this beautiful lady went up, and I went, oh, she's going to answer or ask a question that's going to lead into mine, and it did. Perfect. And that was segment intending. I recently started doing this, segment intending, then I heard a recording that Esther's doing it. And I'm carrying this book around with me, and I'm just writing it down. I'm not doing it at the intent or extent that Esther is doing it. It's, that's a little bit hard for me to do every moment. Well, you can do it in your mind. Yes. And that's almost as powerful. So the clarity that I wanted was, uh, maybe this will help everybody. So you said the law of deliberate creation. Does that run into the law of segment intending? Is that very it, piggybacks? Really, in those early days, as Esther was receiving us, there's only one law, and that's the law of attraction. Deliberate creation is a powerful intent, more like the process of deliberate creation. The law of allowing is really more like the art of allowing, and segment intending, again, is a process. So I had started about a few days ago, I just started writing stuff down just to appreciate, just for no reason, just to appreciate. It's weird. It's just like, and I've been doing this for a while, and it feels like I'm back to when I first learned about Abraham, and everything was just clicking. And all of a sudden, I'm going, why is it lining up like that? I'm not even really focused on bringing something to me. I'm just appreciating and writing it down. I don't get it. Like, why, why putting it on a piece of paper? Why is it making it so real? Well, here's the thing. You already did the asking, so that part's done. And the source already answered it, so it's really done. So anything that you're doing that helps you to calibrate more consistently. So what's happening with you is that it's the consistency of it. When you say, I want it, but that's not very consistent. When you say, I like this, but this, that's not very consistent. But the more consistent you are about focusing upon what you desire, meaning the less resistance you add to the equation, then the more momentum you allow. And the more momentum you allow, then the more powerful it is. So these thoughts, like today, you know, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of road construction going on in Dallas, everywhere. I'm sure everybody experiences it. So I'm, I'm driving here this morning, and it said 50 miles an hour work zone, right? I don't know why, I would never drive 50 miles an hour. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna follow that sign and just drive 50 miles an hour because there were worker present. So I slowed down to 50 miles an hour and these cars are just zipping by me, everybody. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna relax and it was so hard to drive 50 miles an hour because everybody else was doing 75. <laughs> There's no cops on the road and I'm going, all right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just keep driving 50 miles an hour. It was so hard. But all of a sudden, the thought came, why are we in such a hurry? Like, where are we going? 75 miles an hour, Saturday morning. And I don't think I would have thought that if I wasn't, like, writing stuff down. Because I think I'm just, it's just slowing me down to just appreciate what's around me. Well, we like your story. But we want to say a few things about it. Okay. And around it. And above it. The most significant thing that we want to say to you is that as humans, it is so normal to evaluate your progress through the physics of your physical world as you know them to be, through what you know as gravity and inertia and speed and momentum and those sorts of things. When you meditate on a regular basis and allow your vibration to rise, in other words, meditation means focusing in a way that your normal thoughts stop, which means all resistance stops, which means you allow your vibration to rise, which means you sync up with that pure positive energy, non-resistant vibration. There's such power in that. So when you allow yourself to connect with that source energy now while you're moving around with the people in your world who are competing with their trying to edge each other out and their we don't want to be disrespectful but the mundaneness of approaching life in a physical way and you allow the non-physical energies to orchestrate for you on your behalf 
that's when you begin to discover the true speed, the true clarity, the true cooperative components of this universe. Esther remembers when she was a kid living at home in her little town and her school were only a few blocks away and she walked everywhere sometimes on a bicycle but usually walking and she can remember that feeling of just not being able to walk fast enough and she couldn't really run in her snow boots with her books and such so she was just plodding and plodding and walk and just wishing that there was some way that she could just move faster and we get that that in your physical world you want to move faster but that's because very rarely do you connect with this energy that creates worlds and allow it to work on your behalf and when you start doing that so that you're there for the rendezvous with the moment rather than slogging along trying to make everything go this is a scanty analogy but it's like when you get into your vehicle you don't get it under the hood and work with the pistons there probably aren't even any pistons there anymore or the belts and pulleys you sit in the car and you let the car do the performance and you just direct it where you want to go and that's what we want you to do with this energy we want you to let life point out to you what you want and then we want you to trust that source energy has rounded up all the cooperative components and then we want all of your work to be about chilling about finding the clarity about finding the sincere emotions that feel like security and well-being and liveliness and eagerness and love and appreciation because when you hone in on those so that that's the active vibration around which you are focused now there's no resistance within you and now all that the source within you is lined up for you you'll be right there at the right time your timing will improve the clarity that will flow through your mind the impulse to be there the other day Esther was ripping up the hill she was late she was going to visit some friends in Del Mar she was moving fast because she was five minutes late or going to be she was moving really really fast as she tore off this main road and up onto the hill road that was going to wind up and we said to her take it easy she hears us because she's tuned to us and she slowed right down and in that moment five SUVs big black ones just like the one she drives she drives herself around only she's the chauffeur came moving very fast down the hill there was something going on up there maybe a drug raid she didn't know they all looked so official they were moving so fast down that hillside and she just cooled her jets pulled over as they all went by and she knew that we had seen them coming she's close enough to us to feel the impulse and so she was out ahead of it in that way you see what we're getting at so you don't know what that impulse was you don't know why you felt it so strong just trust it and follow it i did and i, I wrote down uh, last time i was here uh, i was the second one picked and so i was sitting in my car when i got here i wanted to get here early so i can get a seat up front and i was like that's gone that's not gonna happen and so i wrote down you know what perfect unfolding it always is I'll sit where I'm sit I'm gonna make a great connection and I'll be the second one called it doesn't matter where you sit and it doesn't matter whether you're second or third but there is something about desire and expectation in other words in that desire and in that knowing there was no resistance in your vibration and so it was obvious in other words it wouldn't have mattered where you'd been that was your intention with no resistance which made you powerful thank you very much yeah this was amazing yeah thank you really good thank you for everything it's been an amazing 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 journey I'm like on the brink of tears right now because to step into that space of gratitude and appreciation and for the unresisted experience of life the flow of the energy breaking through the barriers and just being present in every moment yeah. feels good no Even fear more. yeah because fear indicates uh, diminishment of who you are absence of fear means complete connection yeah 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 and like you said you're not thinking about the things that you're worried about you're focusing on just being spontaneous in the moment Enjoy. and if you're not thinking about the things you're worried about then they dissipate and they no longer exist they no longer exist if there are things that you're not thinking about that you're worried about they still do exist right because you're putting your attention on them and so you're activating them but to be so it's worth asking yourself 
Are there things to worry about or are no, there not? There's nothing to worry about because the universe has everything lined up. It's well, let us put it this way. You're right, but we would say it this way. Humans would say, Abraham, that's crazy talk because of course there are things to worry about. So let us just put it in a different way. Yeah, there must be things to worry about because a lot of humans are worrying. So it would be illogical to say there aren't things to worry about because a lot of humans are worried. So we don't want to be illogical, but we will say this. Your inner being is not worried about anything. Damn straight. <laughs> and so when you realize that your inner being isn't worried because your inner being is solution oriented, then that's the way to put that, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. We just wanted to comment on. Thank you. Focusing the energy, channeling the energy to just be present yeah. and focused and experiencing in a way that is so full. Yeah. And when you start thinking about something that is detail oriented, I like how you talk about, you know, you can be in this non-resisted state and it's all flow and it's great. But when you get the thoughts focused in a very powerful way, then you're actually amplifying and now you're speeding things up because you're focused in that way that is orchestrating and organizing further expansion for yourself further down the line. Becoming more detailed implies, and don't you agree that it happens this way for you? The more detailed you become, then the more attention you've given to the subject. And the more attention you've given to the subject, then the more momentum it has. So details like those that your inner being focuses upon always feel good. And the more detailed you are, the better it feels. Details that you're focused upon apart from your inner being get feeling worse and worse and worse and worse. Momentum will come no matter whether you're focused upon wanted or unwanted. Sometimes people want to know, they say, Abraham, you make us feel schizophrenic because you say, be deliberate about what you think, think about what you want. And then you say, but go general. And we say, go general if you're focused in a way that is feeling uncomfortable. Because the more general you are, then the less detailed you are, then the more it will slow down. But really, and we mean this with everything that we are to our friend who was driving 55 miles an hour. Don't you really want to go 90? Yeah. In other words, isn't it way more fun? But do you want to go 90 when you're not in control? You want there to be no resistance and no resistance means open road. No resistance means not run over any road workers. No resistance means not get a ticket from the man who's out there trolling for money. Wouldn't you really rather go really fast than really slow? Oh, the detail is so important, but you got to have clear space before you get detail.